Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's Brood. There's an old adwoib, as Mama would say. It's always quiet before the storm, especially for the blooms in Hollywood. Things have been running along smoothly for Papa in the movie business, so smoothly that it's uh, suspicious, but perhaps it's nothing to worry about. Right now, we find Papa in his office at the studios, talking to Mama over the phone. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. All right, Mama, all right. Yeah. I'll wait right here for you, Mama. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What? Yeah, Mama. Yeah, I'll tell the girl that you can come right in. <laughs> no. No, Mama, you won't have to give your name because the, the girl knows you now. Yeah, yeah, I remember, Mama. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, you did? Well, you can tell me about it later, huh? Yeah. All right, Mama, all right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mama, yes. Goodbye, goodbye. <clears throat> Oh, there you are, Pa. Yes, Sidney, yeah, here I am. Where else should I be at 11 o'clock in the morning? Well, I was just in here a few minutes ago and you weren't around. Oh, so I'm here now? Well, <laughs> what's the matter? Plenty. Oh, did you have to say that? Please, Sidney, can't you keep it from me? I'm afraid not, Pa. For weeks, this place was quiet. Things were running around like a, like a clockwork. And suddenly you come into my office and trouble starts. All right, Sidney, all right, uh, I'm ready for you. How much did you spend? Well, nothing yet. Yet? <laughs> that means you're going to. No, Sidney, absolutely no. Now, you wait can't... a minute, Pa, wait a minute. This is serious. You've got to listen to me. I've got to, but I am listening. Five minutes ago, I was a very happy man. I was not too happy, but I was humming a little. <laughs> now, now you come into the door and you bring me bad news. Please, Sidney, I'm afraid to listen. If you'll just give me a chance, Give Pa. Give me a chance, but... Still raving, Sid. Tom, no, nobody on the set can quiet her. Good gosh, that woman, what's she doing now? Tearing up the scenery. Tearing up the... Who's tearing up the scenery? Fire her. Fire her, I say. We can't have anybody tearing up the scenery that costs money You don't because... understand, Pa. You don't understand. Ooh. Tearing scenery doesn't mean she's tearing it. It doesn't? No, it just means she's having tantrums. Yes, and it. how old? Listen, Sid, she's liable to do anything. She's liable to walk out. She's... Just I... a minute. Just a minute. Please stop everything right now. <laughs> listen to me. This morning, I, I, I get out of bed. I was a healthy, happy man. Now I ain't happy, and I don't know how long I'll be healthy. Please, boys, I'm getting old. I can't stand these shocks. If you'll only tell me, what is the matter? Well, Pa, look, it's Ma Chevalier. She's off on another of her temperamental raves, and this time it looks like she's going to break the record for long-distance tantrums. Oh, she is? So? <laughs> so you two are the smart ones, huh? You can take care of everything. Everything, everything in the world. But when a woman starts to get mad, you come running to me, huh? Well, I'm going home. Oh, hey, you can't. I can't, and why not? I still got legs. I don't know how long I'll be able to use them, but I still got legs. I am going no, home. No, uh, no, you can't do it. She's coming here. I don't want her in here. But you've got to see her. She's our biggest box office attraction. We can't afford to lose her. Lose her? But she's under contract. When you sign a contract, you can't leave. Yeah, but the contract reads that she gets to pick her own stories. She doesn't like the one she's cast for now, and she's telling the world about it. She blew up in the middle of a scene. She won't play it. We're behind schedule with the picture the way it is. We've got to do something, Pa. <laughs> now it comes out. We've got to do something. We. Two weeks ago only, you were saying sentences with nothing but eyes in them. 
You didn't even think of me. But now, when trouble comes along, you got to include me right away. You do, huh? <laughs> well, all right. I don't want any part of it. Now, look, Pa, we've got to get her quiet. She's the biggest attraction we've got. Why, every time she's in the picture, uh, the box office is Sacco. 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 Terrific. Colossal. Gigantic. Why don't somebody around here talk just a little smaller once in a while? All right. Why is she coming here? To quit. Quit? She can quit, boys. <laughs> a contract is a contract. Sure it is to anybody else. But to Marcia Vellier, a contract is just a, a scrap of paper. Or she can break the contract if she doesn't like the story, and she doesn't like this one. She... Look, tell me, did you two boys make the contract that way? No, no, Pa, no. Somebody else did. Somebody else? All right, all right. <laughs> then fire the one who did it. He quit three months ago. He went to a sanitarium. He went to a... a, a, a sanitarium? <laughs> that ain't a bad idea. I think I'll go to one later. What are we going to do, Pa? If we lose her, we lose box office. If we lose box office... I we... lose my mind. I know. You don't have to tell me. It's already half gone, so what's the difference? Now, listen, Pa. We've got to sit down and figure this thing out. Some way, somehow, we've got to quiet Marcia Vellier, get her back on the set, and catch up with schedule. Yeah, but how? The crew on the set told me that she's worse today than she's ever been. And I can believe it. Why, she broke a baby by throwing a chair. She broke a baby? A baby, that's a light, Pa, a light. A, a light? And she's coming in here. Move the chairs out, put all the ba- the lights away. Move me out. Now, now, don't be scared, Pa. We'll handle this all right. We've got to be diplomatic about it. Now, maybe we can give her a raise in salary. Oh, so we can give her a raise in salary. Uh, how much is she getting now? Two thousand a week. Two thousand? Sydney, you couldn't give her a raise in salary. If you add anything to that, I couldn't be able to figure it out. No, I refuse. Absolutely. No. Well, it stands to reason something will have to be done. All right, we'll just have to take it as it comes and figure out something, then. There's just nothing you can plan to meet an emergency like I this. I have done a lot of crazy things in my life, but never did I do anything as crazy as buying a movie business. There I was on a nice vacation. I didn't have to get up in the morning if I didn't want to. And when I did get up, I didn't have a headache while I ate breakfast. No, I am afraid to get up in the never morning. Never mind, Pa, never mind. We'll get you out of this. You will get me out. I didn't get into anything. I was dragged. But I don't even know her. I only saw her in the movies. Yeah, and I... but... <laughs> yeah, but, but... Uh-oh. Well, well, uh, well, 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 well. <laughs> Miss Vallier, how do you do? We were just coming to see you. <laughs> uh, sit down, Miss Vallier. I do not want to sit down. I will never sit down again. Never. I'm going back to hunger. <laughs> so am I, but for me it will be just hunger. Oh, how can you stand there and joke at a time like this? Who are you? Who are... I... Sydney, Sydney, tell her who I am. Maybe I don't know. Uh, Miss Verrier, this this is Mr. Bloom, the president of the company. Oh, I see. So you are the one who is responsible for making out of me, Marsha Verrier, a fool. A fool? I never saw you before. You, ne- you never saw. You never saw me, Marsha Verrier. This is the last straw. I am going back to Hungary, to my little farm, where I can raise pigs. Not work for them. Miss Faye, please. It's bad enough you should call me names. But please, don't call me that one. Oh, boy, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you'll just sit down and take it easy, Miss Vellier, we can, we can get this whole thing ironed out and we'll all be happy again, huh? Happy? Happy? I shall never be happy again. Never, never. My pride is gone. I'm working for a miserable little salary and I'm insulted on top of it all. Two thousand dollars ain't a miserable salary, Miss Vellier. Ah, for me it is. For my talents, it is misery. It ain't. Uh, pa, just a minute, Did please. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear it? I spend years of struggle to get where I am. I leave my beloved Hungary to come here, to give my talents to this country, and I am working for this, this cheap company. It ain't cheap. I paid enough for it. Yeah, too much. I refuse to listen any longer. Now I know I'm going back to Hungary. Oh, but Miss Vellier, think of your reputation, your, your, yeah, your art. Your art? I don't care about her art. Think just once of my money, please. No, he speaks of money. Money, bah. Bah? Tried to eat without it. And now he brings up food. I refuse to listen. Uh, give me a cigarette. Yeah, here you are, yeah. Not that kind. I smoke Egyptian. Smoke an Arabian for all I care. Oh. Oh, I'm left without speech. Oh, for years since I've left Hungary. I've thought of nothing but my art, my acting, my talents. I, Marcia Verrier, have a reputation to uphold. And I can't do it with this cheap little company. My parents in Hungary, all my family in Hungary. And right now I wish I was in Hungary, please. Please, I am a very sick man, very sick. And I am getting sicker every minute. Pa, please, let Harold me handle let it. Let you yeah, yeah. Uh, Miss Vellier, if you'll just take it easy for a couple of minutes until we can explain. Now, we'll change the story. We'll put in or take out anything you like. Oh, that is so nice. 
Will you take out the part I am sleeping in the straw stack? It's cracked. Sure, sure, sure we will. We'll have a new sequence ready. Oh, that is so nice. Who are you, boys? Who? Well, well, never mind that now, but will you be satisfied if we change the story around? But you will have to make it very, very nice, or I will go back to Hungary. And that will make it very, very nice, and it will cost me money. It talks about money again. That's the only way I get close to it. I never see it. Hello, Papa. Hello, boys. Hi, hello, Mama. Uh... Papa, what's the matter? You don't say hello to me? <laughs> hello, Mama. Jake, are you sick? You're very pale, like a sprite. Spirit, Mama. Never mind, I know he's sick. No, Mama, I ain't sick. Not for I can do something about it. I'm sick in other places. That's very foolish, Jake. You can only be sick very tight. Oh, oh Ma, this is Miss Bellier. This is Mrs. Bloom, Miss Bellier. How do you do? I'm fine, thank you. You are Papa's secretary? Ma. Oh, I... I... Pa a secretary? She called me a secretary. This woman called me a secretary. Please, my wife is not a woman. Papa, that's foolish. What am I if I'm not a woman? I don't care who you are. You, you call me a secretary. Now I am going back to Hungary. Yeah, yeah, it's nice there. Papa had a cousin who came from Romania. Ain't that near Hungary? Oh, Ma, please, Miss Bellier is our biggest star. Bellier? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Ain't I silly? I didn't know you. <laughs> I thought you was young. Just... Oh, about... Oh, no, I am going back to oh, no, no, What's the matter? Is she worried about something, Papa? No, Mama, she ain't. I am. Ma, maybe you better wait outside for a couple of minutes, huh? Sidney, don't be foolish. I came here to see Papa, and I don't wait in the exception room. But, Ma... Once I did that, because I didn't think I'd have to tell Papa my name. Besides, I got a letter from New York. I want to tell Papa about it. Please, Ma, we haven't got time for that now. Miss Vellier, please stop crying. I'm very sorry she's crying, but I didn't do nothing, Papa. I got a letter. Mama, at a time like this, you're bringing me letters. Miss Vellier is going to quit. If she quits, we don't have a big star. If we don't have a big star, we are going broke. No, so, at last, you admit I'm important to you. Of course, Miss Vellier, of course. We, we told you we changed the story. Papa, let me read you the letter, Mama, huh? Mama, you're gone crazy. At a time like this, you want to read letters. But, Papa, it's very important. I'm going to quit. Any other company in Hollywood would be glad to get Marsha Vellier. Oh, wait a minute, miss, huh? Wait a minute, huh? Papa, I'm trying to tell you that this letter is from Abraham Michelson, the one who lives in the Bronx. What do I care about Abraham Michelson who lives in the Bronx at a time like and this? What do I care? I'm going. Abraham Michelson's got a second cousin who's out here and is a big star. Her name is Rachel Robinovich. But, Mama, I... Papa, don't give me interrupts all the time, Why yeah? should I care about Rachel Robinovich? Because she was born in the Bronx. And her name out here is Marsha Villiers. <laughs>